Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have 16x plus 35 divided by x squared plus 8x plus 14, and that is equal to x squared. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, this is a rational equation because we have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. But guess what? We're going to turn this into a polynomial equation. But one of the things you need to be careful about with rational equations is the fact that the denominator should never be zero. Because if that's the case, then we have something undefined. Okay? You can't divide by zero. It's totally not allowed. So we need to make sure whatever we find for x values, this should not equal 0. Now, if you think about this, this is actually x plus 4 squared minus 2 equals 0. But we don't want it to be 0. So we don't want this to be 0. What would happen if this was equal to 0? That would mean x plus 4 squared equals 2, which means x plus 4 is plus minus root 2 and then subtract 4 from both sides, x should not be one of these values. So when, if we end up finding one of these values, which is not very likely, then we should exclude them, okay? Otherwise, this can just turn into a polynomial equation. So let's go ahead and start by cross multiplying. That gives us the following, x to the fourth plus 8x cubed plus 14x squared, so I'm distributing the x squared, and then I have 16x minus, I mean, plus 35 on the other side of the equation, right? Cross multiplication gives you this. Now, we can go ahead and put everything on the same side to get a full quartic. So let's do that. This is a quartic equation, and there's something called the quartic formula, but I don't think you want to know that. It's really, really, really complicated. You can look it up. I think there's a picture on Wikipedia, which is huge. And imagine if there were a quintic equation, which, you know, it doesn't exist, right? There is no quintic equation. Just accept it, right? Don't say like, oh, it can't be solved by elementary radicals, blah, blah, Gerard, Girard, whatever. It doesn't matter. There is no quintic formula. You have, you have to accept that fact. It's sad, but true. But there's a quartic formula. And if the quintic formula existed, it will be super duper complicated. So maybe we're glad that it doesn't exist. So anyways, this is a quartic and there's quite a few different ways to solve it, you know, but I want to depress this quartic, right? I want it depressed. What does that mean? I want to get rid of the cubic term. If that term is missing, then we're going to be in much better shape. Make sense? Okay, let's take a look how we can do it. The trick is simple. You replace x with another variable plus some number. And the constant is determined by this. You take the coefficient of x cubed, this one, you take that coefficient, divide by the degree, 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2, that's a positive 2, you negate it, and there you go. That's what you substitute. Make sense? Easy. Because what it does is when you replace x with y minus 2, which I'm not going to do, by the way, because that's going to take forever, and I already know what the answer is, so I'm going to tell you what it is. But first, let's go ahead and make the replacements at least, right? So when you replace x with that, and when you expand it, what happens is y cubed disappears. And that's what you want. So this becomes y to the fourth power minus 10y squared minus 8y plus 5 equals 0. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and suggest two different methods. I'm going to show you one of them, and you can do the rest. So we'll maybe call that the first method, and that'll be incomplete. Hopefully you can complete that and let us know how that goes. And the second one, and I'm not even sure if the first method is going to work nicely, but a, at least we know that actually, if you go with the cubic, I think it should work. But are we looking for rational solutions? That's a good question, right? Or are solutions irrational? Anyways, we'll find out. But the first method goes like this from this point on. We're going to, because there is no y cubed, we can actually write this as follows. y squared plus ay plus b multiply by y squared minus ay plus c. And why is that possible? Because there is no y cubed, so 
plus ay and minus ay will take care of y cube. Think about it. They will cancel out. And after distributing this, you're going to get the coefficient of y squared and y and the constant term, which is going to give you three equations and three variables, a, b, c. And then that'll give you eventually a cubic equation, which you have to solve. Cardano, Ferrero, Tartaglia, just pick your Italian guy and go with that method, whatever you name it. The cubic formula uh, will allow you to solve it. Or we can solve it a little differently, which is I think my uh, more favorite method. I think this method is called Descartes method. And the second one is, I don't know, what is, it, what is it called? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, so how do we solve it? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and isolate the y to the fourth and y squared on the left and put everything else on the right hand side. So I'm going to be adding something to both sides to make this a perfect square, the left hand side. And notice that this can be written as y squared minus 5 squared, but that will be y to the fourth minus 10 y squared plus 25. So I'm missing a 25 here. Let's add 25 to both sides. And to be able to do that, I'm going to move things around a little bit like this. And now I'm going to go ahead and add 25 here and 25 here. Now the left hand side becomes a perfect square and that's just perfect. Not perfect enough, but we'll get there. Now at the same time, you want the right hand side to be a perfect square. How do we achieve that? Well, we could actually do this trick one more time. Like what should I add to this? I'm gonna be adding 2k times y squared minus five plus k squared and notice that this is going to make it y squared minus 5 plus k quantity squared, which is another perfect square. And that's also going to make the right hand side a perfect square because we have 8y plus 20. And we're adding 2k times y squared minus 5 plus k squared. Now, if you rearrange the right hand side, you're going to get 2k y squared plus 8y. We're going to write it as a quadratic in y and then plus 20 minus 10k plus k squared. Now notice that the left hand side is a perfect square, the right hand side we want it to be a perfect square as well, which means the discriminant should be zero. So you have two pathways. You can either write the discriminant delta, which is b squared 64 minus 4ac, and I'm gonna write it as follows, just like a standard polynomial. And then we want this to be zero and that gives you a cubic, you can solve it or just think about it and then test some values. If this was a competition problem, k would be a nice value. We would have integer coefficients. So how can I make this? And it doesn't have to be an integer, by the way. k can also be a fraction. I mean a rational number. So can k be 1 half so that we get 1y squared? Yes, but it doesn't give us a perfect square. But if you go with 4, which is another perfect square, that would work, which means if k is equal to 2, then we would get something like this. y squared minus 5 plus 2, which is y squared minus 3 squared, equals 4y squared plus 8y. And if you replace k with 2 here, you're going to get 4 minus 20 plus 20. That's going to be another plus 4. And if you factor out a 4 here, you're going to get y squared plus 2y plus 1, which is a perfect square. And that's just perfect. Nice. Now we can write this as y squared minus 3 quantity squared equals 4 times y plus 1 quantity squared. Whether you go with the perfect, uh, I mean, whether you go with the difference of two squares or you can just square it both sides and go with the absolute value, you're going to be getting two solutions like this, this one, and this one. And then from here, you're going to get the y values. The rest is easy. I'm going to leave it up to you. But let me tell you, after all these, you're gonna get the solutions as negative three plus minus root two, negative one plus minus root six. Those are the X values, you gotta be careful because after finding Y, we have the back substitute. Now, if you use the other method, you should get the same thing. And notice that this is not a value that would make the denominator zero, so we're in good shape, but it's kind of close, right? Yeah, gotta be very careful with that. And now let's go ahead and take a look at something from Wolfram Alpha, ta da 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 here we go. The graph of these two functions and they intersect at four points, there are four real solutions. A rational function intersected by a parabola. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.